All right, guys, Black Friday, I had a long day. I've had a hectic week, you know what I mean? Can't wait to go inside and drink some eggnog. But before I do go in from my day's exploits, I want to do my predictions. I don't want to drop them Saturday morning like I have been doing, you know. I want to drop my predictions for match week 13 where the biggest, one of the biggest games of the season is being played, Liverpool versus Manchester City. I have my prediction let me know yours in the comment section down below. And look, i like to take the time to thank everybody who tune into this channel and show love. I don't have as much time to come, you know, comment, you know, reply to all the comments, but I'll try to get to your comments. But this is me saying thank you and big shout outs to everybody who are still supporting the channel. Do me a favor, smash the thumbs up button. Let's get this prediction video up to at least, I'm not going to say a thousand likes, but let's get it up to 500 likes, 500 likes. If you could get it to a thousand, great. But before we even get into um, the, the week 13 predictions, guys, let's run through the results of the European matches. Man City 3, Feyenoord 3. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. I'm a City fan, by the way, if you don't know. Giving up a 3-0 lead after 75 minutes and the, becoming the first team in the Champions League history ever to do so. Come on, pathetic. We have sunk to, to, to new lows. I know we have reached the highest of heights. You see what I mean? We have gone where no man, no man has gone before. But now, we are also going as low as no man has gone before, prior to this. Lower than low. Plummeting to, to new depths. Come on! We need to get it together. We need to get it together. That was, that was atrocious, man. That was, I'm like, yeah, boy, we're getting a mojo back. 3-0. Ooh, we must beat Feyenoord. This is going to, you know, kickstart a sign of things to come, positive things to come, and then, bam, back to the negativity. Sporting 1, Arsenal 5. Yeah, Ruben Amarim not in charge of the team no more. This is a team that just came off of a big 4-1 win against Manchester City, and look at what Arsenal did to them. Hey, come on, man. Give it up to Arsenal. They're getting their mojo back, and... They're looking to challenge, you know, in the Champions League and in the Premier League. Aston Villa nil, Juventus nil. Good result for Villa. They've been, you know, leaking a lot of goals and dropping a lot of points as of late. But this is a quality result against a European giant in Juventus. Liverpool 2, Real Madrid 2. I did nil, not 2, nil. Real Madrid nil. I didn't watch the game, but give it up to Liverpool, man. This is a team that has haunted Liverpool for years on years. Champions League finals. Wasn't it two Champions League finals? Liverpool lost to Real Madrid? Like, this is ridiculous, man. Liverpool, come on, man. You know? <laughs> Liverpool, um, Liverpool, Real Madrid. My memory is like Real Madrid, Champions League uh, final. Champions UCL final. You know, let me see. UCL final 2022. 1-0. 1-0. And back in the, that, I can't remember what was the margin, but um, when Salah got injured by who? Sergio Ramos? This team has haunted Liverpool, and I know this would feel really good for Liverpool fans. 2-0 over Real Madrid. Kylian Mbappe flapped out big time, you know. So, guys, we move into the Europa League where Manchester United defeated Bodo Glimt three goals to two. And since they sacked Eric Ten Hag, Man United have not lost a single game. They've dropped points, they've drawn games, but they have not lost. And I bet you, if Ten Hag was in charge, the amount of games that they would have lost would have been probably more than 50%. You know, so... Sometimes you just have to pull the plug, man. Just have to 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 to, to pull the plug and you know and and sack sack people. You have to. So Tottenham two, Roma two. I guess a decent result in the Europa League. At least they didn't lose. And for Chelsea, Heidenheim nil, Chelsea two. 
And I'm like, look at a team like Heidenheim in playing European football. And they, they used to be a second division German team just a few seasons ago. That's like crazy, man. So that's it for Europe, guys. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let's move on. So for the Brighton-Southampton match, I did predict a 3-1 win for Brighton. It ended in a 1-1 draw. So I think um, I haven't watched the highlights of, as yet, but um, Southampton did go 2-1 up, but Cameron Archer's goal was chalked off. Mitoma in the 29th and Flynn Downs in the 59th to give Russell Martin's team a well-needed point as Brighton, who are coming off of a, a, a win, pick up just one point in this game. Brighton are a very mercurial team. You never know what you're going to get from them. You know, but that's not a bad thing at all. They, they're they more positive than negative, though. Not like uh, a Manchester United on the Ten Hag. So that result is done. So we have nine matches to talk about. So um, wait, before I do move on, in terms of the current standings, Brighton move up to second place. Second place in the league table. Wow. 23 points, same points as City, but they do have um, the same goal difference. And I think um, they have the same, same, same stats. Everything the same, same stats. Same amount of goals conceded, same amount of goals scored. And they played one game more. In terms of Southampton, they are still at the bottom of the table. Five points. This is only the third game that they didn't lose this season. So give it up to Southampton, man. They they're heading in the right direction. Of their last five games, they haven't lost two of them. You see? So not bad. And before that, it was just L L L L L L L. So we move on, man. Wolves versus Bournemouth. The thing is, um, Wolves have been in good form. If you check out Wolves' form in their last four games, they're yet to lose. They have two draws and back-to-back -back wins. So give it up to Wolves, picking up some form there. Jumped out the relegation zone. They do have nine points, and they would look to continue this momentum, um, seeing that Mateus Cunha is playing so well. Amongst other, you know, other other players. But um, Cunha is the talisman. And they need him to continue firing. I don't see Cunha staying at Wolves another season. This is a quality player that a top six Premier League team are going to look look into signing. Maybe an Arsenal, a Liverpool. You know, even maybe a Manchester City. You never know, man. You never know. This is a quality player. Just don't go to Spurs, though. <laughs> I'm just going to warn you. Don't go to Spurs. But who knows? He could look to maybe a Barcelona, Real Madrid. Who knows where he could end up, man? This is a quality player, Mateus Cunha. So for this game, um, look, Bournemouth, they haven't been in good form, losing their last two. And they would want to actually stop the bleeding here. So for this one, I'm going to go for a 2-2 two -two draw. But I'm leaning more towards a Wolves win. But I'm going to say a 2-2 draw for this one. You know, I think that's a quality um, prediction. Let's keep it moving. Crystal Palace versus Newcastle United. This one is a, a difficult one to predict because um, Newcastle, the last um, five games, they do have two wins, back-to-back -back wins. But then they also lost three games. So it's, I'm neither here nor there with Newcastle. Crystal Palace in the relegation zone. They picked up some quality results in their last five games, but they're still very inconsistent. This one, I'm going to say two goals to one to Newcastle, but it could end in a draw. But I'm going to say 2-1. I'm not going to elaborate too deep into these games because, you know, I just don't need to. 2-1 to Newcastle United. Forest versus Ipswich Town. I'm going to go for a 1-1 one, one draw for this one. Forrest, you know, they need points. They've not been playing well lately. And they've lost their last two, ga <clears throat> their last two games on either side of the international break. But uh, for Ipswich, they are unbeaten in their last three. So that's a, a very good, um, you know, record there in their recent matches. 
I'm going to give Ipswich a benefit of the doubt and say they don't lose this one. They pick up yet another draw. And they're going to continue to put pressure on the likes of Wolves, Leicester City, and Everton, you know, to try to pull those teams into the relegation zone and jump out. So, 1-1 one, one draw, in my opinion. Forest, you know, they've been playing some quality football this season. They're 7, 19 points. This would be a good point for them as well. Brentford versus Leicester City. Guys, I didn't even realize it, but Steve Cooper has been sacked by Leicester City. I think it's a bit harsh after, you know, 12 matches. He picked up 10 points. But you can't expect Leicester to get relegated, come back into the Premier League. Didn't make a lot of big signings in terms of um, quality Premier League, you know, um, caliber players. And you, you, what you expect the man to do? Work fucking magic? You see what I'm saying? Like, come on. None of the promoted teams are up there. All of them are struggling. Southampton, Ipswich, and Leicester. Leicester are higher than those teams, and you still suck the, the manager. Like, come on, man. But, but they have hired former Manchester United assistant and interim manager, and former Man United player as well, Ruud van Nistelrooy, the former Dutch international. So he did well in his short tenure as the caretaker manager at Manchester United. I, I don't know why this person pulled up on me here. But it is what it is. But um, so he's been rewarded with a Premier League job. Let's see how he fares. If he can help Leicester stay in the Premier League. You know what I mean? So with that being said, I do think Leicester are going to lose this game to Brentford. Who are in good form. You know, um, three, you know, a win and a draw in their last two. Two losses in their last five. But, you know... They have their guys fit again. You know, the likes of Wissa and Buemo and Co. So, I'm going to say they, they beat Leicester 3-1. Going to be at home, I say 3-1. But, maybe Leicester will have that new manager spunk and pick up a good result. But, I actually made this prediction before I knew they had a new manager. So, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to say... Either Brentford win or draw, but I don't think Leicester's gonna win this one. Let's keep it moving, man. West Ham versus Arsenal. Let me let me just note this. West Ham has been a team that troubled Arsenal lately. They've really troubled them, but um, you know, I don't think I don't think they're gonna do so this time around. You know, but Arsenal. They've been a bit inconsistent this season, early in the season, but the last couple of results have been good. I think Arsenal handle West Ham. I, I think they handle West Ham. I'm going to go for a 3-1 win. I have been watching a lot of Arsenal games lately because they're not a threat, man. They're not a threat. You see what I'm saying? In terms of the the league, the title, they're not a threat, man. And seeing that Man City fell off a bit, Arsenal could use this opportunity to try to vie for the title with Liverpool. But I don't think they're gonna do it. I really don't think they're gonna challenge, man. They're gonna they're, they're gonna they're gonna drop points here and there still, and and fall by the wayside. It seems. But maybe Arsenal could prove me wrong. And I'm going to go for them to win this game three goals to one. Saka is playing well. You know, the defense has been, you know, playing well as well. You know, they, they've had a, a lot of their personnel back. Their midfield looks solid. You know, Partey, Mikel Mourinho, Ode, Odegaard, they, they look good. You see what I'm saying? Their midfield looks good. Their personnel look good. But they just need to put out some consistent results, performances, as I, um, let me rephrase. So 3-1 to the, the, the Gunners, man. Let's keep it moving. Chelsea versus Aston Villa. You know, Villa's picked up some decent results against Chelsea lately. You can't debate that at all. But they've gone through somewhat of a funk. And Chelsea have been playing well on the Enzo Maresca. And I'm going to go for them to continue their good form with a 2-0 win here against Aston Villa, who will keep on struggling, in my opinion. 
Not going to elaborate too much on this one, but 2-0, um, 2-0 to the Blues. Spurs versus Fulham. Spurs are a hard team to actually predict, but, you know, Fulham, they've been a bit hit or miss lately. Two wins in their last five, a draw, two losses. Lost their last game. I'm going to go for them to lose this London derby again. And Spurs to win it two goals to one. Like, you can't beat City 4-1. And I know you drew to Roma, but that that's besides the point. But let's say you beat City and then you come back and can't beat a struggling Aston Villa. It is very Spursy, but I think they're going to win this one. Two goals to one. Man United versus Everton. First home match for Ruben Amorim. Look, man, this one, I don't know. <laughs> Man United, they've been a bit more, but let's say they've been a bit more consistent lately in terms of picking up positive results. So I'm going to stick with that theme and say they win this game, two goals to nil against Everton, who's been a bit so-so this season, 11 points from 12 games. Who knows? Maybe they'll pick up a quality result, a draw. But I don't think they're going to win. I don't think the the stuff that used to happen on the Solskjaer and Ten Hag is going to happen on the Amarim. You see what I'm saying? Who knows? Maybe they lose the odd home game against, you know, the teams that are up there. But losing at home to teams that you should never really lose to, like everyone goes to Old Trafford and get a win. You know what I mean? Like... You gotta win, you gotta win, you gotta win, you gotta win. But I think they I think with the the change of manager, getting rid of Ten Hag, it's gonna actually stable the home base. That's just what I think. I'm not saying Man United are gonna go and challenge for the title, but the results are gonna actually be better. Maybe a draw here and there, but I don't think they're gonna lose at home as much as they did. 2 0 to United. And guys, last but not least, I'm not trying to be super long. Really not trying to be long. But Liverpool versus Manchester City. I've had the privilege of seeing this fixture at Anfield. So big up to my boy Qatar who hooked me up with tickets and we were in the cup. And I got to see it right down, you know, field level. I got to see Edison in goal, Allison in goal. All the players, Van Dyke and, you know, all these guys, man. You know, I've seen them. I've seen them. James Milner, you know what I mean? Nunez, you name these guys. I've seen them. I've seen Pep. I've seen Klopp. Guys, I'm not just here babbling. I've seen, I've seen a Premier League game. I've done something that most of y'all never did. You see what I'm saying? So give me, give me a little bit of credibility, okay? I've been there in the flesh. It felt great. Early Haaland, Kevin De Bruyne, it felt good. It felt good. I saw when Salah spun João Cancelo to score that goal. Thunderous applause in the cup. So, guys, Liverpool on fire this season, man. Top of the table, one draw, one loss, 31 points. You know, um, goal difference of 16. Only Tottenham comes close with a plus 14 goal difference you know uh the best defense in the league spurs do have the best attack but liverpool are up there i think they're top of the champions league breaking a whole lot of records on the new manager on a slot who slotted in very well man you know so give it up to slot seamless transition from club to slot inherited a really good team and is working wonders with that team you know, players are looking confident under their new manager. And, you know, they've just been doing well. You got to give Jack his jacket. You got to give credit when credit's due. And Liverpool deserve all these plaudits, man. Seriously. As for Manchester City, we've been utter dog shit. Utter dog shit, man. Don't know what gotten into the team. Maybe we're missing Rodri. Maybe we're missing a Julian Alvarez to give us that, that secondary striker option. You know, that impetus going forward. Maybe that's what we miss. You know, maybe we miss that Riyad Mahrez magic. 
maybe that's what we miss, man, because I don't know what's going on right about now. We go into a funk, can't win a freaking football game in the last six. But, guys, we've done so much winning that this feels so weird. When, you, when you're used to winning, 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 when you start losing, 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 drawing, drawing, losing, it's like, God damn, what is going on here? You know what I mean? The world starts, the world stops to rejoice. You see what I'm saying? So, unbelievable stuff, man. Guys, let me let me let me stop beating around the bush and delaying the inevitable. City are not winning this game. And we are not drawing the game. We are losing. Three goals to one in favor of Liverpool is my prediction. City is not coming close to a win. I have no hope. I'm going to watch this game. I'm going to make some notes. And I'm going to come and talk about it. Liverpool fans are going to come and, you know, roast me in the comments. Because we've been poop. Seriously. You know, City dropped down to third, 22 points. Liverpool top of the table, 31 points. So, if Liverpool win, the gap is going to be stretched. Well, 23 points. The gap is going to be stretched to, um, let me see. Right now, it's an eight-point gap. It's going to be stretched to 11 unassailable no but it's a healthy lead to have a little wiggle room to go on to win the title liverpool is yours man it's yours it's up to you if you want to bottle it <laughs> seriously it's up to you if you want to bottle it man don't bottle it anyways man guys that's my prediction european review quick review and my prediction for week 13 short and sweet you know what i mean like a baddie from the Caribbean. Anyways, guys, listen. Thanks a lot for watching yet another one. Let me know your predictions down below. Subscribe if you're new. Like the video if you haven't yet done so. And from your boy, Dom, this is Dominic Rich FC. Until next time. Peace out. Rich. Squad. Peace. We talk.